And now, the Mole Mystery Theater, presented by M O L L E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. <laughs> Good evening. This is Jeffrey Barnes welcoming you to the Mole Mystery Theater, the program that presents the best in mystery and detective fiction. Tonight's mystery by Sanford Schlesinger is entitled Zelma's Boy. Stars Betty Gard and features Walter Vaughn and Ronnie Liss. Larry was 13 years old. It wasn't his fault that his father was a thief. Surely a child is not to be blamed for the sins of his parents. And the treacherous blood of a criminal doesn't pass on to the next generation, not even where murder is involved. Or does it? We'll let you decide about Zelma's boy. Well, say, Mr. Barnes, sounds like you've given our listeners a real toughie tonight. And speaking of toughies, men, here's something that makes tough whiskers easy to shave. It's that old smoothie, Mole Brushless Shaving Cream. Yes, sir, it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's the smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. Try it. Mole. And now for tonight's Mole mystery, Zelma's Boy, starring Betty Gard. I beg you to read this letter, to listen to me through these words. This is my last, my only hope. One life has already been taken, and I'm afraid two more may be gone before the day is done. My sister, Zelma's boy, came to our house a little over two months ago. He was 13 years old, if you figure age by birthday candles. But if you judge age by mind and movement the way I do, then you'll know that Zelma's boy was a lot older than his boyish face would lead you to believe. I remember the morning he was to arrive. George and I had arisen at 6 o'clock to meet the train. Did you call to see if the train's on time? Yes. Now, please get through with your breakfast. I don't see why we had to get up so early just to meet him. He's old enough to take a taxi. If you hadn't stayed out so late last night, six o'clock wouldn't seem so early. Who are you with? No, no, don't start in on that again. I'm sorry. I really don't care who you spend your evenings with, but I don't want Larry to take any tales back home to Zelma. It would just give her a chance to say she warned me against marrying you. Your idea to invite him here. And if you think his being here will bring out the paternal instinct in me, you've got another thing coming. I think I'd better go to the station alone. That's the best idea of the day. And when the brass band is through with the welcome, better take him aside and tell him to behave himself. Don't worry about Larry. I'm sure Zelma brought him up to be a little gentleman. Just like his old man, I suppose. George, I don't want you to mention that again while he's here. Seems to me that someone should have warned your sister, Zelma, about marrying men who like to sign other people's names to check. That has nothing to do with Larry. Nothing. Maybe not. But in my book, the apple never falls far from the tree. I met Larry at the station. It wasn't hard to recognize him. He was the picture of his father. Tall, lanky, blonde high cheekbones that made his boyish face look sallow and sickly. But he was nice. A little gentleman, just as I had told George he would be. On our way home from the station... Larry. Yes, Aunt Emily? It's, uh, it's been a long time since you've seen your Uncle George, hasn't it? Oh, I don't even remember him. He never came with you when you used to visit us. But Mom told me all about him. Oh. And just what did she tell you, dear? She said he isn't very nice to you and that I should try to keep you company. Well, you mustn't judge your uncle too harshly, Larry. He 
He hasn't been very well, and sometimes he's a little cross. Well, you don't have to worry about me, Aunt Emily. I can take care of myself. Now, is there anything else you'd like to eat, Larry? Don't be bashful. Nothing, thank you, Aunt Emily. Well, Emily, i got to get down to the office. If you're downtown this noon, drop in and the three of us can have lunch together. Why, I, I think that would be very nice, don't you, Larry? Well, I, I'm awful tired. If you don't mind, I think I'll take a nap. I, I had to sit up both nights on the train. Oh, you poor darling. Why did Selma send you by coach? You came in on the Empire Express, didn't you, kid? Yes. It's an all Pullman train. No coaches on it. Oh, I, I know, but there was a mix-up in the reservations, and I, I had to stay in the smoking room. Too bad. Well, we can have lunch together some other day. <sighs> and Emily. Larry. What are you doing here in my room? What? Nothing. I, I I was just looking around the house. I I wanted to see what it looks like. Well, you were certainly quiet about it. Larry. Larry, my dresser drawer is a mess. What was it you wanted in there? What? I don't know what you mean, Aunt Emily. I wasn't looking in your dresser drawer. Honest, I oh, wasn't. I don't see how it could Well, maybe gotten... Uncle George was looking for something. George? I, I I heard him in here just after we got home from the train. Really? What the idea? I'll help you straighten up the drawer. Uh, no, dear, I can do it. You run along downstairs. <laughs> I forgot the incident almost immediately, but a few nights after Larry's arrival... Where are you, Emily? Emily, I... Oh, here you are. Hey, have you noticed All my... dressed up tonight, I see. Going out again? Oh, never mind. Have you seen my type in... No, I haven't. You know, there's something funny going on around here, or maybe I'm going nuts. What are you talking about? The last few days, I haven't been able to find anything, it seems. This afternoon, I went out to lunch and had to borrow a dollar from one of the boys. Could have sworn I had five dollars and some change in my pocket last oh, night. it's very possible that you were mistaken. Oh, it's been going on for the last few days, ever since... Ever since... Ever since what, George? I wonder about that Empire Express story he told us. What? I wonder if he really had to sit up all night or whether that was just a play for sympathy. I don't know what you're mumbling about, and as for your tie pin, I didn't wear it. Emily, have you found things missing around the house lately? No. No, nothing's been missing, George. You're not a very good liar, Emily. You know as well as I do that it's a kid. I don't know any such thing. Well, you will. Let's go up and have a little talk with your darling nephew. Larry. Uncle George. What's the matter? Mind if I have a look through your dresser drawer? I seem to have lost something. There's nothing in there except my things. I hope so. For your sake? I know there's nothing of yours in there. The drawers were empty when I put my clothes in. That I believe. Socks, shirts, ties. Ah, what's this? George, I wish you wouldn't go through the boys. Oh. Isn't this clip yours? Why, uh, Why, yes, yes it is. Well, let's see what else. Oh! George, what? Nothing lost, Emily. I just stuck myself with a pin. My tie pin. I, I don't know how those things got in there. Come here, Larry. That's it. A little closer. George! You had that slap coming to you, kid. Maybe you ought to be slapped every hour on the hour just to knock the rottenness out of you. I I didn't take those things. Oh. Lie to me again, Larry. Because every time you do, you'll get it good. Understand? George, get out of this room and don't ever lay a hand on him again. Well, how can you stand up for him when the evidence is right in front of your eyes? I'm telling you, tricks like this run in his family. Told you that even before the kid got here. And you wouldn't stop at anything to prove what you say is right, would you? Just what do you mean by that? Let's just say I don't believe everything I see. Why? You can take it for whatever it's worth. You have your tie pin. Now you're all dressed to kill. Why don't you go wherever you're going tonight? Well, of all the stupid... Oh, that... Devil. 
<laughs> oh, Aunt Emily, I, I didn't take those things. I didn't. You believe me, don't you? I'm not a liar. Of course I believe you, Larry. Your Aunt Emily knows you're a good boy. I hate him. Don't you, Aunt Shh. Emily? There's no way to talk, Larry. How can you like him when he goes out and leaves you all alone? I'm used to it. Now you go to sleep, and by tomorrow all of this will be forgotten. No. No, it won't. I hate him. Everything Mom said about him was right. And I won't forget. Ever. <laughs> I left Larry in his room and went downstairs. I slumped in the big easy chair and tried to read, but it was no use. A terrible feeling of loneliness came over me and I began to cry. I just couldn't seem to stop. I fell asleep in the chair, but was awakened a little after ten when I heard the front door open. George! George, what's the matter? You're white as a sheet. Never mind. Well, why are you pulling down all the shades? You're, you're shutting out the air. Shut up. Huh? Why don't you go upstairs to bed? Where are the cigarettes? The cigarettes! Over here by the radio. George, I wish you'd oh, tell stop me... stop pestering me. Mm, these rotten matches. No wonder you can't light that cigarette. You're shaking so that your ha... Your... Your hands, George. What's the matter? What are you staring at? Your hands, George. What happened? If I wanted you to know, I'd tell you... Now stop asking me questions! I can't describe the terrible, sinking feeling that cut through me when I saw his hands. Everything in the room began to blur. And I slumped into a chair and listened to the water from the kitchen faucet as it washed the awful red blood from my husband's hands. Upstairs, a young boy lies peacefully sleeping in his bed. How innocent is the child? Could he in any way be responsible for the terrible scene taking place below him? Well, mystery fans, we'll have a better chance to decide in just a moment when we bring you Act Two of tonight's Mole Mystery. Meantime, here's Dan Seymour with a special message for all the wives and husbands in our audience. Say, Mom, do you buy your husband's shaving cream for him? Well, then, how about me letting you in on a secret? You know, some men get in the habit of thinking that shaving has to be a scratch-and-scrape affair, so they never do anything about it. Well, the truth is, Dad's trouble is probably caused by tough whiskers or a tender skin. So next time you go shopping, get him a tube of Mole and watch a smile come over his face. You see, because Mole is heavier, it not only softens whiskers, it stands them up straight, ready for a smooth, slick shave. So ask Dad to try it. See if he doesn't say, it's smooth, so smooth, it's slick, so slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. And now this is Jeffrey Barnes again and act two of Zelma's Boy. The next morning, I read all about it in the newspaper. At first, it was just another murder story. My eyes barely glanced at the headline, Girl Murdered in Canyon Park. Then I read the first paragraph, and my heart began to beat faster. Good morning, Emily. What's so interesting? Oh, nothing. Here. You want the paper? Thanks. One or two eggs. Two is all right. They're, um... There was a girl murdered in the park last night. Just one piece of One toast. of the park policemen got there just after she was shot. I'd like the salt if you he, don't mind. Uh, the policeman, that is, he saw the killer bending over the girl, but he got away unidentified. Hurry it up, Emily. I'll they, be late for uh, work. They found the gun in the bushes near the girl that didn't have any fingerprints on it. I think the paper said it happened about a quarter of ten, just a little, a little while before you got there. Shut up! I can read. Then it was you. 
What do you mean, it was me? I know it was. Oh, George, why don't you let me help you? You helped me. That's a hot one. Sure, sure, it was me. The cops saw me running. The girl, George. Who was she? Nobody. Who she was, nobody. Don't lie Just to me, George. like me, a poor excuse for a human being, but a, a sweet kid. Good company, nice to talk to, and... No, you wouldn't understand. Well, if, if you loved her so much, then why did you kill her? I didn't love her. There was nothing that even looked like love between us, any kind of love. Just met her in the park a while back, and we got to talking. That's all it ever was with us, talk. Nice, friendly talk. And as for killing her, it doesn't matter whether you believe me or not, but I didn't do it. The shot was from the bushes. When she fell into the grass, I bent down to see if I couldn't help her. I saw it wasn't any use. I heard someone coming. I ran without... Without thinking, I ran. Then why don't you call the police and tell them Why so? should I want to get mixed up in this? After all, Emily, I didn't do it. There's nobody to say whether I did or not. Yes, there is, Uncle George. Harry, you've been eavesdropping. I was there in the park. I saw you. Why, you... George! Were... Let the boy alone. Oh, let him alone till he sees me swinging on the dirty end of a rope, huh? He saw. Do you get that? He saw. He's been listening outside the kitchen door to everything I've said. How do I know he doesn't just think he saw, huh? How do I know he isn't lying again like he always does? I'm not lying. I'm not. And Emily knows I never lie. Never mind that. Now listen, kid. Listen good. You say you follow oh, me. Oh, why are you asking him these questions? You know you won't believe anything he says. Maybe not, but that doesn't mean the police won't. Don't you think you've abused the child enough? Emily, about... I think I could talk a little better with Larry if you weren't around. Mm, so you can slap him again like you have before. Don't leave me alone, Aunt Emily. Larry... I'm really sorry I slapped you. I want you to try to forget all that for a few minutes and pretend like we just met. There are a lot of things you can't understand. Things about feelings, and happiness, and loneliness. You gotta remember that your Aunt Emily and I are married. We only have each other. Without me, there wouldn't be anyone to look after. Don't waste any tears on me now, I George. I told you to shut up. What I'm trying to say, Larry, is this. If you say you call, saw me kill that girl, it won't hurt only me. It'll hurt your Aunt Emily, too. You wouldn't... You wouldn't want that to happen, would you? No use, George. It didn't work. He isn't quite the child you think he is. No. He's no child. He's a devil. Get him out of here before I kill him! <laughs> Hello, Chuck. Chuck, this is George. I thought I'd better call and tell you I might not be down at the office for a while. George, I'm just quiet. Quiet, quiet. quiet. Oh. Yeah, Chuck, it's the wife. Heart condition. Yeah, I had an attack this morning. I, I thought I'd better stay home and keep an eye on her. Uh, thanks, Chuck. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll be with you in a day or so. So long. You're afraid. Afraid of the truth. You're wrong, Emily. Then why don't you call the police? You know why. That kid. And if he was asleep in his room that night, he'd still say he saw me shoot her. You're quick to judge others by yourself, George. I'm ready yet, Emily. Oh, We're just going to the grocery store. We won't... Think you'd better telephone for your groceries. Wouldn't be healthy for me to let you out of my sight. All right, George. I won't argue with you. Just how long are we to stay in this house? That all depends. All depends on Larry. I'm going to cure him of lying. Cure him or... Or what, George? Don't worry. I'll cure him. Operator. Operator. Oh, hello. Operator, can you get... Put the to... phone down, Larry. <gasps> oh. Who were you trying to call? Get away from me. And Emily... And Emily... Shut up and answer. Oh, Larry, dear, what's the matter? George, leave him alone. I haven't heard him yet. Try to call the police, will you? you... I, I wasn't. I wasn't trying to call the police. Of course not. I told him to call for some groceries. I, I, I didn't know the number, so I just called the operator. They're lying. Both of you. One's as bad as the other. Well, I'll put an end to that right now. Give me that telephone. But you... No. No. Let's see how well we can get along without a phone. And I don't want any more tricks, kid. 
I'm getting to the end of my rope. Every minute you keep us prisoners in this house convinces me of that, George. You're getting very near the end of your rope. And now, with your permission, of course, I'll go to my room. Downstairs now, pacing, thinking. I don't know what he'll do next. I only know something terrible is bound to happen to the three of us in this house. If anyone finds this letter on the sidewalk, for the love of heaven, call the police. It's too late. Let this serve as a witness against my husband. Signed, Hemlock Briggs. George, let him alone. George. George! Open this door! George! George. George. Don't go in there, Emily. What have you done to Larry? Look, Emily. I found my billfold under his pillow. And your diamond ring. What have you done to Larry? I only meant to scare him, but he started to kick and scream. I put my hand over his mouth so the neighbors wouldn't hear you. He bit me. I grabbed him by the throat. I... I didn't oh, think. Larry. Oh, Larry, my poor darling. Emily, it was an accident. You you believe me. Believe you. Why should I? I knew you were mean and selfish. But even with all that, I, I still couldn't think you were capable of murder. But I was wrong. Now, unless you feel like killing me, I'd like to go in and see Larry. All right, Emily. George. George, where is he? What are you talking about? Isn't he there? What have you done with him? Well, he was here on the floor. George. The window. The window, Emily. It wasn't open before. George, you you didn't kill him. Look, there he goes. On his way to the police with one of his lies. Come on, we gotta stop him. This is Jeffrey Barnes again. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of Zelma's Boy. Now, a word from George Putnam. One thing to remember about the most common type of dandruff is that many outstanding authorities say it is not a natural condition, but actually is caused by a germ called Pityrosporum ovale. Now, the only way you can get real relief is to destroy this germ. And simply washing or brushing away loose dandruff won't do it. But double dandrine will. Yes, double dandrine really works because it gets at the cause of this dandruff and kills it. Actually kills the germ on contact. Results with double dandrine have been remarkable even in many stubborn cases. And the thing that makes double dandrine so amazingly effective is a special ingredient, an active antiseptic that's so wonderfully efficient many hospitals use it. In double dandrine we call it Alzan. So stop trying to combat this dandruff with ineffective methods that actually are no better than plain water. Use double dandarine and destroy the cause. Get double dandarine tomorrow. Your money back if not satisfied. There's a police station up ahead. How do you know he's there? I don't, but I gotta go in and make sure. And if he is, it's just what kind of lies he's been filling them with. All right, hurry up, get out. Now, George, be careful. You... Oh, my purse. Hmm? Now, look what you've done. Well, hurry and get it. I want to get it. What's that? Well, nothing. It's just an envelope I put my grocery list on. Let's see it. Oh, I thought you were in such a hurry. Give it a bit. What? Thanks. A letter to the police you were going to toss out on the sidewalk, huh? You were really going to turn me in? George, I... Oh, skip it. If you think I killed her, there's nothing I can do about it. Nothing but face this thing out. Come on. I'm glad you both came down to headquarters. It saved us a trip out to your house. Larry. Oh, Larry, I was so worried about you. Are you all right, dear? I'm all right, Aunt Emily. Sergeant, what did he tell you? 
What lies did he tell you? I'm not so sure they were lies, Mr. Briggs. He's a born liar, I tell you. He steals things, and when he's caught with them, he lies and lies. He told us all about that. I know the boy. I know him as well as I know myself. He wouldn't lie. I told you I'd never lie, Uncle George. Uh, yes, sneaky You can little... be sure that anything Zelma's boy says is the absolute truth. I'm very glad to know that, Mrs. Briggs. Because even though the boy was scared to death and a bit mixed up when he came in here... He finally admitted that he saw you kill that girl in Canyon Park. You can only stay a few minutes, Mr. Bird. Hello, Emily. I'm glad you've come to see me, George. What do you want, Emily? I knew you were meeting that girl, George. I used to watch the two of you sitting there on the park bench, talking and laughing. I often wondered if you were laughing about me. We never laughed about you, Emily. She never even knew you existed. I hated you. I wanted everyone to hate you as I did. I took your tie pin and those other things and hid them in Larry's room. You accused him, but I stood by him. He hated you for that. And he loved me all the more. And then when you knew that he saw you shoot the girl, you wanted him out of the way. You wanted me to kill him. He would have told you that I shot her, but he knew I was his only friend in our house. I made him believe you'd call him a liar and beat him. Time's up. Let's go. Right away. Emily, I, I... I don't know what to... Well, I'm sorry. Goodbye, George. Goodbye, Emily. This is Jeffrey Barnes bringing down the final curtain on tonight's mystery theater presentation of Zelma's Boy. Be with us next week to hear an unusual story by the well-known producer Billy Rose entitled Kiss Me Goodbye. The original music for the mystery theater is composed and conducted by Alexander Semler. Any resemblance between the names and characters used on mystery theater and any actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs> You know, sometimes when you're overtired, you go around with a chip on your shoulder. You're out of sorts with the world. Now, if you're that tired and pale besides, your doctor may find you have a borderline anemia, resulting from a ferronutritional blood deficiency. Then, take ironized yeast tablets. They help build up red blood cells, and that makes you feel better and look better. So, take ironized yeast tablets to be the happy, healthy, energetic person you used to be. Ironized yeast tablets. And now this is Dan Seymour saying good night and asking you to be with us next week at this same time when the Mystery Theater presents Billy Rose's Kiss Me Goodbye. <laughs> this is